I just got the email from Celestron that my Rasa is on its way here. It should be here in a couple days. So it is time to get this Octopi Octaspace adapter hooked up to my ZWO ASI 2600. So that way when the Rasa gets here, we are all ready to go. Coming up right now on the channel. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Easy Astro Image channel. I am Chad. Yes, the Rasa 8 is on its way back here. I've had the Octopi Space Adapter for a while here and we are ready to go. So we've also got the ZWO ASI 2600MC Pro here, which we have to get ready so that we can get all this stuff mounted together. Now, I appreciate everything that Keith and Doug and some of the other guys have done when it comes to putting this together, but I think there needs to be something that is a little bit more comprehensive that is what I am trying to do here. So we'll probably do this in a couple parts and make sure that everybody is on the same page because this is something that is pretty much important, guys. If you look at any hyperstar system that Starzona has developed, they all have what Keith has built here. They have collimation screws, push, pull, whatever you wanna call them, to align the sensor with your optical system. Now, Celestron kind of sold us short. They gave us an F2 telescope and they convinced all of us that we could pretty much just thread a camera onto the end of it using some adapters and everything would be beautiful. Now, some people, I guess, get lucky or they just kind of deal with stars or crop them out. To me, that's not acceptable. I've got this huge, large frame sensor. I want as flat and big of a field as I can get. I want my money's worth. Now, I've spent a lot of money on Arteski and Starzona filter drawers and sliders and adapters, and none of them work. They all yield horrible results. We'll go through that stuff in another video because I do want to take a look at that stuff and compare it when the scope gets back from Celestron to see exactly if their collimation did anything to improve it. And the reason why I sent it out was I wanted to make sure it was well cleaned and according to them, ready to go before we did anything like this. Because once you go ahead and get this stuff set up, it's not gonna come off easily without being an, a lot of adjustments. So let's take a look at the whole design of everything real quick, and then we'll start mounting some of this stuff up. And please guys, leave any comments. I'm gonna post this on the Rasa Facebook group. Leave any comments here in the video. I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page here. So here is the adapter itself. It's multiple different pieces and this is the bottom part that will actually attach to the rasa it's super nice he's got a 3d printed um you know kind of holder cap here so you could take everything off and have the dust you know not get inside there so it is threaded to go on to the rasa itself i believe his rasa's 11 system actually doesn't even thread it has screws that will actually attach it so this is going to do a lot of things all at once one thing is it's going to properly allow us to center the camera on the imaging circle, which we know that if you're just trying to use the regular Celestron adapter, how that just kind of floats in there. And when you tighten it, it'll shift. And when you unloosen it, it shifts. It's just a mess. So inside the bottom here, we actually have a flip out filter holder because it can't be totally pull out drawer. And he gives you some extra uh, filter holders as well and some O-rings for dust and everything like that. Extra and also an Allen wrench. And our filters are just gonna go in there and thread in and then that will close up right there. And there's our filter. So this is the, the basically the bottom piece that's gonna connect on to the Rasa itself. Very nice, very nicely machined. And inside you will see right here, these three adjustment points, I believe are what is gonna center this base that is gonna go down inside here with the camera. Now, the first thing we have to do is we need to prepare the 2600 
by removing the black flange on top of here and then attach and then attach this bottom part of the base to that so i'm going to go ahead and remove these screws and get this black tilt plate off of here and we'll proceed to the next step all right so that was pretty easy we basically just had three m2 screws that we had to get out of there and now we've got our black uh, tilt plate from zwo gone and we're going to want to keep those screws to the side because of course if we ever want to take this off or do whatever we're going to need to keep all that so i'll probably bag all that stuff up so the next thing that he says is you want a nice complete and level surface what i have here is my setup board for my rc cars which is a pretty expensive piece of wood that is meant to be completely flat and level so that way i can get the best setup on my rc cars and we're going to take these two pieces apart i've already removed these three screws here and now what i want to do is pull these o-rings off of here so we can separate these two pieces and now we can just lift up there and now we have the very first piece and literally all it's going to do is just pretty much hold our camera we're going to set it just right down in there and there is one screw here at the front which is a m 2.5 millimeter and we're going to want to loosen that up so the camera can drop down in there and it is flat and before i turn it down i want to figure out and make sure where i want my actual camera to be as far as the sensor rotation and everything else when i'm done i don't know if i'm going to be able to quite figure that out yet but let me take a second and see if I can. Looks like we're gonna have to just go with it here because we're not gonna know really how things go until this baby is mounted up on the Rasa. So I've got that pretty tight and snug, not going overboard and torquing way down on it. And there we go, that is about as flat as I think I can get that. We're just gonna roll with it. So now what is gonna happen is this top part of the adapter ring is going to go back over top of this. And if we flip it upside down here, you can kind of see what we got going on. We got you know the whole push pull system here where we're going to be using these small screws to really move it closer or further away and then these are going to be our adjustments so we're going to lock it in with these but then these are going to help move things around a little bit and you can see that uh we also got some wiggle there this whole thing is going to float and that's how everything is going to get adjusted in here once that is done all right so the next thing we're do is get all this stuff together and you took the included wrench here and we want to back out these centering screws here just to make sure that the camera itself will be able to wiggle around in there when we get it all inside so i think we're pretty much ready to go with that so i'm gonna drop the camera inside here and it only fits a certain way and you can see that we've got uh, plenty of wiggle room going on there. And then we are going to take the top ring here and place that on to the top. And there's going to be some holes underneath here where everything is going to line up. And we'll have to put these three screws back in, or bolts per se, which I believe are M2.5 yep and that will get everything all cinched in and lined up together so we'll go around robin here and not tighten all those down at once so everything is even 
All right, so now everything is joined together and it is in one piece. So the camera is able to float around this way and it's going to be able to move up and down. So we are good to go with that. Everything is cool. And at this point, I am just going to now set all of my screws to the starting length that I want to put my back focus at which I guess we'll put it at about seven and a half millimeters. And what we're gonna do to do that is we're gonna use an actual caliper and we're just gonna go along here and measure the lengths of all those. And we're going to basically loosen up one to tighten the other. And we're gonna bring all this stuff out and make it solid. And then we'll also go ahead and tighten these up a little bit. Now, we're probably going to have to go back and forth a little bit when we actually start getting some imaging because we're not going to be able to really tell how well this is centered until we start taking some actual images. You know, the last thing you want to do is have this thing all the way over here and you do a flat and you have a complete dark edge here. So we could play with that movement whenever we get the actual camera onto the scope, but we can set this up here right off the bat. All right, so we are off to a good start here. What I did was we got everything all set up and mounted up here, and I settled on an amount of 7.7 .7 millimeters. So let me know what you guys think, if that's a good starting point from your experience with the 2600 and Ross 8. I'm assuming that I'm going to have to just go out. So to make that all happen, we'll go around and we'll undo this screw right here. And then we will make adjustments right here by loosening to the left and then tightening that one to the right. And what that's going to do is this is going to push against the plate and move this assembly back. That's pretty much where I'm at right now with this guys. And I hope that this helps a little bit and we'll keep on going once the rasa gets here and we get it back up on the mount and get everything ready to go i've just shot a bunch of brand new dark frames so we are going to be ready to go imaging as soon as we get this on here we'll do everything with the ccd inspector and all that kind of stuff and try to see if we can uh, make this a solid and simple process Thanks a lot guys and hopefully with some clear skies in a few days we will have some more updates on this baby and we'll see how flat we can get this. Peace.